L and D Infotech IPO has opened today. We heard uh, the management earlier talking about the business, the growth opportunities. Uh, let's get in an analyst view as to one should subscribe to this IPO or not. Sarabjit Kaur Nangra, VP Research at Angel Broking, now joins us. Sarabjit, uh, would you you know want to subscribe to the L and D Infotech IPO? How would you look at uh, this IPO? It's it's an it's a fully offer for sale, and we earlier heard that the management that uh, you know growth rates in Europe would tend to improve. Hmm. Uh, see, if I look at uh, l and Infotech in a holistic manner, let me point out what the pluses of the business is. Plus of the business is that uh, A, uh, they have, uh, obviously the parentage is pretty strong as we know. Apart from that, uh, the strong point in the business per se is that uh, they are conscious, ROE conscious uh, firm. They have been, um, you know, it's... Uh, on a prima facie business, it's nothing differentiating from any other mid-cap uh, IT company. Uh, it has a high uh, uh, client concentration, uh, which is uh, which is its negative also. But currently, it's giving its uh, visibility in terms of revenue and hence increasing its ROEs, uh, asset to term turnovers and ROEs. Uh, apart from that, uh, it's very, very much skewed towards banking in terms of domain banking, financials and uh, and to uh, to a very large extent to energy so uh, uh, primary facey business as such is not very very exciting the only part positive about the company is that they are very uh, roe conscious in terms of uh, making sure that the asset to turnover is higher uh, but the uh, the flip side is that the client concentration it's coming at the expense of higher client concentration so i don't take it very uh, positively that aspect of it but the other aspect which has kept the ROEs uh, or uh, ROIC, if I have to uh, uh, compare like to like for across the industry higher than their peers is that uh, it's, it, it gives out cash uh, significantly out to shareholders. Its trend has been that to give out at least 70% or more to shareholders in form of dividend, which none of the IT companies do to the large extent. TCS does to the extent of 50%. So that is what keeps its ROEs higher. Now coming to why we like the issue, um, we are not very aggressively pushing it, but yeah, it's a subscribe for us because we believe that valuation at which it is coming, it's left some room for investors to get into and uh, make decent amount of money. Uh, but uh, I'm, I don't think there is extraordinary anything different uh, that l and Infotech per se uh, has as a business model visa with its peers. Uh, it, it is a good dividend paying company so the dividend yield investors can expect can be 4% and uh, capital gains because of the valuation at which it is coming is 13 times FY16 trailing if I and that is a 9, nine months number that they have given so roughly around 13 times and uh, most of its peers are trading at around 15 to 18 times on the higher side so I, I think 18 will be too much but 15 even if I sign it I think there is decent upside available and plus retail investors are getting 1% extra because of the uh, pricing for retail. So I think there is a, it's not a very great issue, but yeah, it's a decent issue in recent times where at least uh, the uh, the company coming with IPO has left something for the investors also. Otherwise, most of the IPOs recent past which have come in are very tightly uh, priced wherein uh, there was nothing much for investors to actually uh, get into and uh, make some money out of it. So I think it's a, from that perspective, the issue is good to get subscribed to. Otherwise, there are risk and a pretty huge risk that uh, the company runs because of the share size and because of the way they are doing the business which includes as I mentioned high client risk it mentioned um, also there are uh, client risk in terms of their largest client is 14 to 16 percent of its revenue which is comparatively very high and very risky we have seen in many companies wherein you know major clients when they pull off uh, the performance gets deteriorated so the risks are very high but the valuation at which they are coming I think they are kind of given investors a bit of room to play so that's why it's a subscribe otherwise uh, i think it's a uh, it's it's just like any other it uh, mid cap it company actually right you know uh, if you just compare this company to some of the other mid cap names don't you think it's better off to own yeah. uh, those mid cap names rather than taking this company so uh, uh, tech mahindra is trading at 14 times versus lnt infotech at 13 yeah. and emphasis which is a similar model is trading at about uh, 13 and a half times don't you think that that should be you know, taken yeah. for a long-term bet or you are just looking at short to medium term in terms of gains coming in because of the IPO? See, as I said, the plus point that the company has done towards shareholder has been that track record says uh, good share, dividend paying out company, which is not the norm in IT, 
whether you take large caps or mid caps that's the plus other other plus is pricing that they have done now the comparing it to other peers as you said whether you're better off uh, now the thing is tech mahindra is not a mid cap so it's it's becoming one of the, it's the size is pretty the difference between uh, lnt infotech and tech mahindra is huge so I, i can't compare both these companies the nearest closest one is what you said is emphasis though i don't track emphasis uh, as an analyst um, what i know according to the business ma- model again is that's high cr- Uh, client concentration and most of the problem that plagues most of the id companies in the mid cap space so i guess uh, those are the risk which are inherent there and though valuations are similar the only plus points uh, the lnt infotech has is high roe vis-a-vis vis-a-vis emphasis and obviously a growth track record which is much better than emphasis so i guess probably they will get away over there uh, you know in comparison in comparing with the closer peer and still uh, you know getting at least that's what i say the room is limited but there is a little room available that's why it's a subscribe for us you know as far as uh, the overall uh, you know it pack itself is concerned You know, one would say that earnings outlook is slightly lower. We have Infosys declaring numbers in just a while from now. Expectations are not that great from any of the IT companies. In that context, do you believe IT sector may underperform? So, you know, the issue may not, uh, you know, see great returns coming in. See, the thing is that uh, being a fundamental analyst, I don't look at events from uh, you know stock uh, moment purpose p- perspective. and obviously uh, those events are not something uh, which i can uh, because see in many stocks the thing would be the stock might react before if earnings come in so these event risk are not something which a fundamental analyst will ever uh, put a probability on and i don't think i think it's a futile exercise also in the first place to do because uh, being a fundamental analyst i would be more uh, uh, taking a comfort in the business model and the numbers that the company is throwing rather than the quarterly part of it Uh, see the thing is one more thing that trend i have noticed in most large it companies at least in uh, tcs infosys which i have now realized that you know they are they moved from one part of the leg of the growth now they have to move on to the another one which uh, which demands them to you know get into balance uh, if you look at the client mining of hcl you look at tcs infosys they are go- they have good order book positions on their books and that's why the virtue of being one of the out- good uh, top notch outsourcing leaders so the quarterly trend is also in terms of volume the 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 only variation that we see nowadays is because of exchange rate but if you look at track the volume that is happening in most of these large companies they are doing very good 3 to 4% q on q growth which i think is very good so seasonality is dying out in many companies actually so i think that trend or that call to take uh, could be riskier so i i'm just putting a perspective otherwise i would ad- never ad- advocate anybody uh buying any stock uh, um, just b- uh, because on the event uh, that is going to play out and put a probability on it it's better to play on the numbers that the company is going to dish out and the valuation that you're paying because at the end of the day when i buy a stock it's a company business model and the money I'm, that i'm paying for these are the only two variables available the rest of them is something which you know you can't put your money on because it's like market risk which nobody can put uh, their exact amount on so i wouldn't like in, uh, investors to play that actually and uh, at least for any issue or any ipo or for any matter for investment in the equity so i wouldn't go with that thought process right let's talk about the pharma pack so you know for cadilla for lupin uh, for alembic we did see eir coming in uh, which is of course a closure of uh, the form 483 that we had seen earlier which is coming in good yeah. time so you know they have not yeah. taken a lot of time versus some of yeah. uh, you know the historic companies yeah. have True. do you think the concerns over there are True. easing out you think pharma is a space that now you would look to be overweight on uh see uh, pharma per se uh, we have been overweight only uh, initially when the stocks uh, currently now more so uh, rather than as you rightly said because uh, the thing is most of these company even if you look at uh, look at lupin lupin uh, i think 6 uh, months or uh, more than 6 months year, uh, back was flying uh, non stop one direction cipla was flying one direction after the news flows of 483 and other things came in their performance quarterly growth numbers were lower the stock has or most of the stock have taken a severe beating so i believe we yeah, are right time to get into these stocks and uh, actually uh, most of these stocks large companies like lupin as you rightly pointed out even cadilla for that matter uh, sun pharma one of the great blue chips in pharma it's it's still available decent valuations uh, to provide a comfort to investors so i think it's um large caps like dr reddy's there are many stocks which are currently because of us fda concerns are 
trading at valuations which are actually very attractive for investors to get in. As far as Alembic Pharma is concerned, currently we are neutral on the stock. The company has a potential, but as I said, it's a it's a mid it's a small a small to mid cap company. So the when um, when uh, you know. Uh, what is the beauty of large cap companies? They are uh, getting more revenues from the US, so that they take a huge beating when such news ca- news flow comes in. But they have their risk management ability and their, as you rightly said, track flow where they cover up these issues faster also. So they have the bandwidth now to cover up or cover overcome such problems. Whereas in case of companies like Ipka Labs and Alembic, which are mid caps, their resources in terms of manufacturing base even uh, you know uh, is not so diversified. So if one plant goes for a 483 or import alert, their business gets dried up for one or two years. So these are good companies, but they take long time because of various various issues, non diversification of uh, manufacturing facilities and other issues. So I think it's a good time to get overweight on pharma. Olympic pharma, since you asked, we are neutral. Rest of the stocks that uh, Lupin, Cadilla, Sun Pharma, we are buyer in the uh, buyer in these stocks. Right, uh, Sarabji, thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Hope to speak to you again once we get uh, the details of the listing of LNT Infotech as well as some of the numbers from the IT pack.